waking up to some uh, stunning views this morning. How's it going? Can I just get a shower? Sure. Well, that felt amazing. was a great way to start the day. Feeling good, feeling fresh. Quick update for those of you who are following along on the road trip from Key West to Alaska. According to my car, so far I have driven 5,298 miles, which is just about almost as much as the trip would have been if I had straight up beelined it from Key West up to Alaska. So we are definitely taking the scenic route along the way. So I left that beautiful mountain vista for my last video yesterday. In the afternoon after this park service lady came up to me and told me that they were closing the gate to the location that I was parked in because they had caught wind of a massive party that was supposed to happen there and they just wanted to get ahead of themselves before it got too rowdy out in the middle of nowhere. So they were closing it off. But we've got ourselves a breakfast bowl. We're showered and we're ready to go. And today we're going to Sedona. So since I drove like an hour north to that truck stop last night, it's only about an hour drive up to our first stop at Stona. So I'll check in with you guys once I get there. And there they are, Red Rocks of Sedona. I'm really hoping that I'll be able to find a campsite out in the wilderness out there that has a pretty good view of those rocks tonight. And I've camped here before and I do know a spot that I can go to. I just don't know how packed it's gonna be since it's a Saturday and it's pretty nice weather out, it's like 60 degrees, so I don't know, I guess we'll see, but we are supposed to get some snow tonight, which will be cool. And look at that. Sedona is easily one of the most beautiful cities in the country. It's almost like the rocks give the effect of it's constantly sunset, no matter what time of day it is, because of their color. Pretty cool. Also, another fun fact about Sedona, this is the only McDonald's in America that doesn't have the golden arches, they have teal blue arches, because Sedona thought that the yellow arches would clash too much with the uh, colors of the hills. So that's the only McDonald's in America that doesn't have signature golden arches. But I'm pulling in here real quick to go to the bathroom before we head out to our first spot, which is Devil's Bridge. All right, so I ran into Safeway, got some really good stuff for dinner tonight that I'm excited to cook. I went to the bathroom. Now we're ready to go for a hike. So this is where the trailhead is, but there were cars parked all along the street down there. So I'm guessing that there is not going to be a parking spot up here, but we'll still drive up here and check. Yeah, it looks like it is packed. I should have got here earlier today. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any parking in the parking lot. So I guess we're going to have to go find somewhere on the street. All right, so we are pretty far away from the actual start of the trailhead, but this is the first spot that I was actually able to find. So this is where we're parking. So since I'm currently just about a mile away from the trailhead itself in my parking spot, I think I'm gonna grab my skateboard and skateboard over there. So I don't have to walk that extra mile on the side of the road. Grab myself some water and a uh, snack. Let's get out of here. taking the skateboard out forever. Pretty nice views too. Look at that, we're making record time. Those people passed my car like five minutes ago. Bada bing, bada boom. Only took us like five minutes to get there. Not bad. This road's a little bit too bumpy for skateboarding. 
put the skateboard in the backpack. I don't know how stable it is though, so just kind of hoping it doesn't fall out while I'm hiking. And also, about my footwear, these aren't my favorite hiking shoes. I just don't like wearing socks with them when I hike. And I've worn Birkin socks on pretty much every single hike that I've been on since I lived in the van, including glaciers, up to the top of mountains, and a bunch of different places, and they've always served me well, and I love them. So there were a ton of people who suggested that I go check out Sedona on this trip in my DMs and in my emails when I asked for it in my other video. But the only one that I could find, and there might have been more, I don't know, so I apologize if I missed it. But shout out to Charlie Chalanda for recommending Devil's Bridge. If you guys ever have a recommendation for things I should go, places I should check out, send me a DM, leave a comment, send me an email. If I go check it out, based on your comment, I'll give you a shout out. All right, so we're about a quarter of the way through the hike right now. It's looked relatively the same for the entire time with some points that open up more than others. And then some of it is kind of like this, walking through a light forest, but it hasn't been too bad so far. I think the last like quarter mile of it is pretty steep uphill, but so far it's been pretty flat. There we go. I wish I'd put mile markers on these trail signs so that I knew how far I was from the actual bridge. Oh, that thing is bad. Earth roamer. Pretty sure those are like $300,000 though. There it is. I don't know if you can see it through the trees right there. There's a large, we're almost there. It's like a graveyard of stacked rocks. I wonder what the purpose of that is. Yeah. It's like the first viewpoint along the trail. But I think we still got a little bit more to go up over to there, so. Check in with you guys once I get there. And there it is. And I think there is a very long line to walk out there and take your picture. But I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I will be waiting in. Because at the pace these people are taking pictures, it's gonna take like two hours. They kissed. Also, if I had a quarter for every time someone said, are you gonna be skateboarding back down the mountain? Because I had my skateboard sticking out of my backpack, I'd be a rich man. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to go stand out there and film myself standing on it, but realistically, I'll just come back at some point when there's no crowds and walk out there and get my picture. Not too worried about getting it today. Mind if I step in here, we'll just get a video. Yeah, of course. Pretty good. Pretty crazy. It is a pretty cool spot though. All right, you guys taking the view one more time <laughs> because I think it's time to say goodbye to this long line of people. So I've got kind of long hike all the way back down to the van. So I'll check in with you guys once I get there. There she is. I ended up having to walk most of the way back because I can't really longboard too easily uphill. So that added like an extra mile to the hike just walking back to the van, which sucked, but Finally here. Man, do I hate Saturdays though. It's so crazy. Now that I have the freedom to kind of go out and check out this stuff on pretty much whatever day of the week I want to, because I do this, YouTube and content full time, it makes Saturdays almost suck because everything is just so crowded and every other day of the week, it's not. So typically I try to go on weekdays when I can, but just the way things lined up, I ended up with the most popular hike in Sedona on the most popular day of the week for going out. Bummer we couldn't go out on the bridge today, but I'm sure I'll be back and I'll do it eventually. But I think for now I'm gonna head up into town, check out the uh, main street that's kind of nestled in between the Red Rocks up there, maybe get myself a little snack and then something to drink, but I don't wanna get anything too big because I don't wanna spoil my appetite because dinner tonight is gonna be good. But I think after we head up to town, I'm gonna go find a uh, spot to camp out in the wilderness because I don't wanna get out there too late with, with how packed that was. I can only imagine that the campsites are gonna be pretty packed too. It is beautiful up here, but I can already tell it's gonna be a pain to find any kind of parking up here. But who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. There's a sign that says there's parking this way. I'm gonna try over here first before I even think about trying the main strip. All right, we got lucky. We got a spot right here in the front. Boom, parking secured. 
Man, we got real lucky. This guy just so happened to be pulling out of the spot that I'm currently in. As I was pulling up on that road and I let him out and took his spot, it looks like that entire lot and all of these streets are full. And we're pretty close to the main strip, so we got pretty lucky, but let's go get a small something to eat, check out the town. Man, I love Sedona. Everywhere you go, it's just beautiful. I think I might try to go get a seat there with the uh, blue umbrellas. How's it going? How long would a wait be for a table outside? Table how many? Three. One. All right, so it was a 20 minute wait for a table outside. They're gonna send me a text whenever it's ready, but for now I'm just gonna walk around and see if we can find anything cool. That's pretty crazy. Definitely not $17,000 crazy. All right, those are some of the most expensive rocks I've ever seen in my life, but the table's ready. Let's go get something to eat. Uh, can I get you started out with something to drink? Let's do a Corona. Got it? Thank you. Can I just get, can I do the asada fries? Let me know if you need anything else. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nothing like an ice cold Corona after a long day of hiking and driving. It's a beautiful day out. I can't believe it's supposed to snow tonight. I was checking the weather and I think that the forecast has kind of died down a little bit. It's not supposed to be any accumulation anymore, just kind of a dusting. It's kind of disappointing, but I guess it's pretty good since I'm going to be off-roading in a two-wheel drive vehicle to get to my campsite. Look at that. That looks delicious. Last time I was in Sonoma, I went to another restaurant on the strip that I'm not going to name, but it was probably the worst food that I've ever had, so I'm glad that this looks good. Definitely good. So the spot that we're going to be camping tonight is like 25 minutes from where we are right now. And there's hundreds of spots out there, so I should be able to find something, but I'm just hoping it's not too packed. All right, so got a box to go. I couldn't finish it all. Let's get back to the van, find a spot to camp tonight. So I'm actually kind of worried about this campsite now because I'm reading online from the reviews and it looks like a lot of the beautiful campsites are closed, including the one that I camped at last time I was here, which is kind of sad. I don't know why they're closed, but apparently there's a big like group designated campsites now. You kind of can't just go out there and camp somewhere, which kind of sucks. Ugh. Yeah, new camping rules, stop ahead for info. That really sucks. The spots out here are so cool. I'll pull over to the board and see what it says. All right, so it looks like there's two options, surprise and windmill. I think I'm gonna try for windmill. All right, so we've got a two mile drive down a dirt road to get there. So I think this is the first of the two designated campsites. I'm gonna go try the second one, see if it looks any cooler. And then maybe we'll come back here because it doesn't look too crowded, which is good. All right, so this is campsite two and it's actually got a view of the Red Rock. So I think I'm gonna stick with this one as my spot for camping. And I think I might take that spot back there. And I might honestly flip the van around because the wind is coming from this way. If I flip it around, at least I can have my door open. Yeah, this wind is kind of ridiculous, so I don't even think I'm going to flip the van around. I think I'm going to drive it up there and kind of park it at an angle so that I can open my doors to the red box and have a nice view. And also, if it's supposed to rain tonight, it looks like it gets muddy back in this area. So I don't want to get stuck back here. You can see the tracks of someone else who had to drive through the mud. There we go. Let's see how much wind I get in here if I open my door. Oh, very nice. Not a lot at all. It's not as private of a spot because like the road is right here, but it's just a dirt road. So won't be too many people driving by and at least I've got a good view here. And I'm actually kind of hoping that we do get some snow tonight. Definitely feels like we might because it is getting cold out. So I think I'm going to wipe my dirty feet off because after hiking all day, they're pretty disgusting. Then I'm going to put my thermal socks on, my sweatshirt, and get a little bit warmer. So when I used to need to wipe off my feet, I used to use baby wipes because I thought they worked the best but honestly what I found best thing that gets the mud off my feet is just a wet paper towel 
wipe it down. Once with a wet paper towel, and then once with a dry paper towel, and you're pretty much good to go with clean feet. Or at least cleaner feet. I'm trying to be as conservative as possible with my water because I had a note last night to myself to refill my water tanks before I came out here because there's not really any spots in Sedona where you can fill a water tank that were convenient enough for me to go to. So I don't have a lot of water remaining in my water tank, but it's more than enough to last me tonight and tomorrow. So I will just fill up tomorrow somewhere. All right, so I just gave the van a nice sweep dust busted everything up because it was kind of dusty on the floor and I don't want to track any of that to my bed later when I go to bed but I just realized that I haven't given you guys a tour of the spot got a nice sunset with some snow-capped ridges in the distance over there looks really nice there's another RV and some people sitting around a uh, propane fire right there but yeah this is the spot nice view of the red rocks in the distance this is that road that we came in on and then these are those now designated campsites so you can't just pull off the road into somewhere that looks like a campsite anymore because you can get a $600 fine apparently but there's a bunch of little pull-offs up in those bushes up there that have a beautiful view of the Red Rock so a little depressing we can't go there but this spot as I said is not too horrible other than the wind and I'm really hoping it doesn't get too muddy here I mean it doesn't look too bad and we're kind of on the upward slope, so it looks like it all pools down there, all of the rainwater and the mud. So even if it does rain and get kind of muddy out here, I feel like we should be fine for getting out. I mean, worst case scenario, at least 200 trucks, Jeeps, off-road vehicles drive down this road every single day. So if I need to get pulled out, it won't be very hard to find someone. But I don't think that I will need to. This is pretty compact stuff here, so not too worried. Yeah, pretty nice spot. Oh, look at that. You can see how much dust is being blown into the van from the wind. And probably from ATVs driving by and kicking a bunch of it up. So for dinner tonight, I got something special for making it this far on the road trip. And uh, just, to, just to kind of celebrate how awesome this channel has been doing and how awesome you guys are. And I wish I could share it with you. Sadly, I can't. Got myself some filet mignon. So, super excited to eat that. I also got some rosemary. Thyme, rosemary, and garlic. So that is what we are having for dinner tonight. So the first thing I gotta do is preheat the oven because this oven is super slow and it'll take forever to preheat. And I'm gonna let that preheat for about 10 minutes before I actually get started. All right, so I've given the oven a little bit of time to heat up. I got my rosemary, I got my thyme, I got my fillets, garlic, and my butter. First thing I gotta do, mash up this garlic. And then I'll take the butter, two tablespoons of that, throw that in the pan. And while we're waiting for that, I will get the steak seasoned up. And for that, we're keeping it pretty simple. We're just gonna do salt, pepper, and evenly coat that on both sides. And then I'm also gonna add just a little bit of this buttery steak seasoning because it's so good. And it adds so much flavor. All right, so now that we've got our butter all nice and melty, we can add in our garlic, thyme, and then a little bit of rosemary. Now that we've got that all nice and melty and mixed together, we can add our steaks. Let those sear on both sides for two to three minutes. And then we're gonna transfer those to the oven. And I think these are just about ready for a flip. Oh my gosh, that looks beautiful. Almost perfect sear on both of those steaks. Now we'll just repeat that on the other side and then pop them in the oven, cook them until they're medium rare, and we're gonna be eating good tonight. Now we'll let those bake for about seven, eight minutes because this oven runs a little bit cold, and then we'll check them with this, and make sure that they're medium rare. And while we wait the next four minutes for those to finish cooking, 
I'm going to shamelessly plug my merch again. I have hoodies, I have a bunch of different colors. I have navy blue, black, white, gray. I have t-shirts, I have long sleeve t-shirts, I have stickers, and I'm gonna be coming out with a bunch more stuff soon. My favorite, if you couldn't tell, is the hoodie, just because it fits so well, keeps me warm, and I just actually really like it. But they do run a little small, so get a size up from what you would normally order, if you do order. Love you. We got about two minutes till these steaks are done, and hopefully, hopefully, they're medium rare. Oh, also, I gotta hurry up before these steaks are done, but look at this sunset. It's like glowing over the top of those mountains. It looks so cool. Beautiful. And just in time, because that signals that they're done, hopefully, pull them out and check them. See if they're at the correct internal temperature, and if not, throw them back in there. Let's see. No! It's way over. Whatever, I'm gonna take them out, let them rest, and hope that maybe just my thermometer's wrong. All right, this is the moment of truth, and I was gonna make potatoes tonight, but since I have leftover french fries from lunch today, I don't need to. Well, let's cut into this steak, see how she looks. Oh yeah, definitely overcooked. It's not horrible, it's definitely medium well to well. Not the worst looking steak, but I haven't cooked a filet mignon in a while. Also have never cooked one in the van, so. Now I know what to do for next time. Cheers to 150,000 subscribers and making it to Sedona on our way up to Alaska. And that's actually still pretty good, despite being overcooked. I was looking for an internal temp around 127, 130, when pulling it out of the oven to let it kind of rise that last two degrees while it's sitting on the plate. But when I pulled it out, it was at like 142. It was already in the medium well to well range. Not a bad way to end the day. And although we started out in a truck stop, we ended up with these beautiful views of the Red Rocks in Sedona. Not bad. All right, so I wasn't able to finish it all. We still got just about a half a steak left. So put that back with the leftover fries that I still have. Save it for lunch or dinner tomorrow. But hopefully we will wake up to some snow on the ground. It's starting to get dark out. I am extremely tired because I woke up super early today and hiked a bunch, drove around a bunch and just did a bunch of stuff today. So I think I'm probably just going to clean up this mess a little bit. I won't do any dishes because I'm trying to conserve water. Um, and then I'm honestly just gonna go to bed. No nighttime montage tonight and I will catch you guys in the morning, hopefully with a little snow on the ground. Good morning. I fell asleep pretty early last night, so I also woke up pretty early today. Woke up about an hour ago. It's 8.30 right now, so I woke up around 7.30. And I don't know if you guys could see it out the back there, but we did get some snow last night. And we actually got a little bit more than I thought we would. But before we go out there, I'm gonna make myself a coffee real quick. And also flip on my heater. Because I don't know if I think, I don't think I have a lot of diesel left in my heater, which I should have filled up before I came here, but I should have enough to get it a little bit warm in here so it's not so freezing. We are actually running pretty low on everything. Water, diesel, gas tank is fine. So we're definitely gonna have to make a supply run today. Also, just to give you guys an idea of how quickly that heater down there can heat up the van. It is currently 48 degrees in here and it is 8.25 a.m. So we'll check back in 10 minutes and see what that says. But it is on and pumping right now. Feels so good. Oh, this coffee's so warm. Look at that. I'm not gonna leave the door open though because I got the heater running. It's like a uh, winter wonderland out here. I wish you could see the red rocks. I bet they would look cool. I think they got more snow though because they're at a higher elevation, but this is Sedona covered in snow. Oh. I just realized I forgot to bring my chair in last night. It's covered in snow too. It's actually really cold outside. It's crazy how much the temperature has changed from yesterday. Yesterday it was 65, sunny. I was fine in a t-shirt. Today, all bundled up with some coffee. And the ground is covered in snow and also pretty muddy. I don't think it should be an issue getting out of here. I do have all-terrain tires on this thing, so I don't think we'll have any issue getting out of here, especially once we get back out there on the main road that's mostly gravel. Just kind of back in here is a little bit muddier. And I can hear that heater below the van ticking away, working hard to keep me warm in there. And also an added benefit of the heater is most of the snow 
will probably just melt off from the heat of it when there's this thin of a layer of it, so that's nice. I don't know though, I am kind of worried about this mud. It is kind of super muddy. But anyways, it is pretty cold out here, so I think I'm gonna head back in the van and take advantage of that heater that's on. But after just about 10 minutes, it's currently 8.35. It is already 59 degrees in here and rising pretty fast. I could definitely take most of my jackets off now. So this is actually the first time that I have taken the van out in the snow when I haven't been at home. So it's definitely a good first taste of uh, snowy weather without too much, because I love this van, but really isn't meant for going into crazy conditions. But yeah, anyways, it was nice to wake up in this winter wonderland, um, and I think that's where I'm gonna end today's video. But don't worry, the next video that I post basically picks off right here where I'm leaving off. So you guys won't miss out on any of the uh, Sedona snow fun. But as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button, and I will catch you guys in the next video.